Okay, my friends, so let's knock out this uh, this single proportion hypothesis testing quiz. Um, I got a template ready to go, so I'm just gonna type into it, and then we'll use the Excel calculator to run the numbers, and then we can uh, we can uh, figure it all out. Okay, so <clears throat> um, we're testing a coin. Uh, we think coins are basically fair when they flip heads and tails half the time, 50-50. Uh, this coin came up 2,090, 40, 40, which I can't, oh, I said that's about 51.7% heads. I was about to say, I can't figure out what that is. So it's not quite 50, 50, but the question is, is it far enough away from 50, 50 to be, to be suspect? Um, so let's, let's set up the, the, uh, the template sheet. Here we go. We're definitely testing a proportion. I'm just going to color that in red. Uh, the variable. Okay. So we're going to, the variable for this one is going to be, uh, P equals, not capital, lowercase. P equals um, percent of time this mystery coin flips heads. Uh, I think that's pretty pretty accurate. Uh, we assume it's 50%, which is what we're going to put down here. And we're going to test whether or not it actually is. Because that's the, that's the thing. I can think I can insert a dip does not equal sign here. Symbol. Yeah, does not equal 50%.5. Um, we're just trying to see if it deviates from 50% at all. So we're going to assume it doesn't. We're going to assume it doesn't, which is the null hypothesis, P equals 0.5. And then we're going to test it against that it doesn't equal 0.5. So we'll, we'll, we'll do a two-tailed test here. It'll be a, it'll be a pretty good candidate for a two-tailed. Even though, I mean, you, I guess theoretically speaking, since I told you in the quiz, let me get the quiz back up again here. Since I told you that's 51.7% head, some of you may have looked at that and said, oh, that's more than 50%, so I'm going to test it at greater than. That's okay if you want to do that. I'm totally down with that. That would just make this greater than, and that would make this the opposite of greater than. So not greater than or less than or equal to. Here we go. Less than or equal to. So you can test that too if you wanted to. That's totally fine. I'm going to stick with, how can I phrase it? Um... Oh, is not 50%. I just said is not. So I'm going to stick with my original hypotheses, which were equals and does not equals. Okay. Uh, we're going to use a Z distribution. We spoke about this in class as to why we're using that bell curve. And okay, test statistic and p-value. This is where the Excel calculator comes in. This is our this is our buddy here. So we know we had 2,090 heads out of 4,040 flips. And we're assuming the null is 0.5. Uh, significance is going to be 5%. We're going to test at 95% confidence pretty much the rest of the uh, the rest of the time. And hey, I've already got this thing set at both tails. Awesome. Uh, that gives us, uh, that's the 51.7% sample proportion that I got you. Test statistic is 2.2 standard deviations away. I'll put that into our template. So the Z equals, uh, lowercase please there, Mr. Word. 2.2, and you can you can actually write standard deviations if you want to. There's no need to because that's what a z-score is, is a measure of standard deviations. The p-value is going to be really small based on that. I forget what it actually is. Yeah, 2.76%. That's pretty small. So the p-value is about 2.76%. That's unusual, which means the correct thing to do would be reject the null and believe the research. So it appears that... The coin is not fair. He coin. <laughs> that the coin is not fair. It appears that the coin is not fair. And we could be wrong. It could be a type one, which means we claimed the coin is not fair, but it actually might have been. That's all I have to write for something like that. Just describe the false positive, uh, the type one error, the false positive in a in a way that a non-statistician would understand. That's what we're getting at with this. You know, all this reject and all hypothesis nonsense is great for stats classes, but it doesn't help. You know, somebody that's never been in a stats class to understand what a false positive is. They may have even heard of a false positive, but they wouldn't know how to uh, express it. So that's what I. That's why I like this this little part number ten in our hypothesis uh, testing templates. All right, friends, that'll do it. I think. Have a good one. Talk to you soon.